Hello everybody, welcome back to the pre capsani to see blog. In today's installment, we're going to be having a look at what is the right kind of bike for the capsani to see. Now, this isn't going to be a video about us telling you why your current bike isn't the right tool for the job or that you're not going to enjoy the ride if you're not on X type of bike. In essence, the right kind of bike for the capsani to see is one with wheels and pedals. Now that is obviously oversimplifying it a bit, but whether you arrive on your brand spanking new marathon bike draped in XTR components with more carbon fiber than you know what to do with, or your old trusty steed that's seen you through thick and thin over the last decade, if you're at the Sony to see with a bit of fitness and a good attitude, it's going to be very hard not to have a good time. Now what bike are most of the riders at your average stage race or marathon event riding on? Well, probably something like the Cannondale Scalpel I have here, if not a newer version of the bike. You're likely to see a lot of specialized epics, Scott Sparks, etc. The kind of bikes that you expect the best riders in the world to be racing at World Cup cross countries, high profile marathon events, and even the top podium contenders at the Sony to see. Now these bikes are designed to be as fast as possible for the best riders in the world. And that probably means they will help you go faster too, at least on the uphills and the roads. These bikes are not very concerned with being stable and comfortable on long technical descents. They require a high level of skill and precision in order to do this, which is expected from the elite racers who pilot them. There is though a trend in modern marathon bike design to make the bikes more capable for descending. This is as cross country courses become more challenging in this regard. So let's talk about what makes the modern bikes better. Now you may have heard quite a lot about mountain bike geometry over the last few years. There have been significant shifts in the way angles of certain performance affecting parts of the bikes are set up particularly things such as the head tube angle, the seat tube angle, and the suspension layout. Now you don't need a doctorate degree to have an understanding of what the benefits of these are, so let's have a look at a few of the factors. Head tube angles, or the angle of your fork, have gotten slacker or more raked out, putting the front wheel further ahead of you. Now this was previously thought to have quite a negative effect on the bike's climbing performance, but this isn't as severe as once thought. The added stability that you get from this on the descents allows you to ride safer and or faster and have a more fun ride. Seat tube angles of bikes are getting steeper. This puts you more over the pedals and less off the back of the bike for a more efficient climbing position. Now this trend has happened in conjunction with the growing popularity of dropper posts allowing you to get the seat out of the way when you don't need it, as well as the increasing front ends of the bikes looking to get more room and stability for the rider. Suspension advancements have been significant as well. Now this is not only in the forks and shocks of the bike, but more particularly the design of the bike's rear linkage. In simple terms, the typical pedaling forces that make the shock want to bob up and down can be cancelled out if the linkage is designed correctly. This allows you to climb with the shock unlocked, as well as allow you to have a bit more travel on the bike without paying the cost of inefficient pedaling. Now all these advancements, as well as some others, have made bikes from marathon to enduro sleds more efficient and comfortable to climb, particularly on rough terrain, as well as more capable and stable descenders. Now the caps I need to see has quite a lot of climbs and descents on which having traction, efficiency and stability will certainly serve to enhance your riding experience. And thus we'll move on to what type of modern bikes are going to be ideal for such a ride. The right bike for you is obviously going to depend on your riding preferences and ambitions. Are you looking to ride as fast as possible, weighing your socks, weighing your brake rotor bolts and not stopping to smell any roses until you've landed in Scottborough? Well then, the right bike for you is most likely a nice lightweight modern marathon bike. Though, this isn't the only bike nowadays that'll get you through a three day plus stage race. You've probably seen a lot more of these trail bikes around your local riding spots and stage races recently. These bikes with longer travel, more relaxed angles and a bit of a tougher build are becoming increasingly popular around the world and now in South Africa too because they are so much fun to ride and not as much of a slog as they used to be to get up climbs because of these geometry advancements. Bikes like the Cannondale Habit, Tiger Stage Max, Specialized Stump Jumper, Trek Fuel EX and Santa Cruz High Tower come to mind. These bikes are designed to get you efficiently to the top of any hill in a comfortable seating position and then allow you to rip all the way back down to the bottom with brilliant suspension and solid brakes keeping you in control. They sure might have a little bit more weight to them than a cross country bike, but due to modern design trends, weight isn't as much of a deciding factor on performance as it used to be. Outside of marathon racing, these bikes will probably open new doors for you to explore and progress your skills at the ever popular trail parks which are expanding around the country. All that said, trail bikes might still be a little bit too much bike for the marathon purists. The in-between of cross country and trail bikes is a niche that's often been referred to with the polarizing down country term. These bikes are not far off from high-strung cross-country race bikes, but will often feature dropper posts, 10 or 20 mils more travel, a shorter stem, 
and slightly more relaxed geometry. Bikes such as the Cannondale Scalpel SE, Specialized Epic Evo, Piga Stage, Trek Top Fuel, and Santa Cruz Tallboy may fall into this category. This might be the ideal niche for a three-day stage race with a healthy focus on trail riding, such as the Cap Sarni to see. Great for people who are looking to go fast on the climbs, but not be uncomfortable and twitchy all the way down the descents. As I mentioned before, if you've got yourself a bicycle and the wheels are turning, it's probably going to get you through the three days of good times between the Southernberg and the Umkmaas River mouth. Even more so though, will these modern bikes allow you to experience the joys of good trails and tough climbs. Some food for thought there and hopefully helpful information to inform your bike choice or potential future purchases. Nothing beats a test ride when it comes to figuring out what bike is best for you and whatever wheels you find yourself on come the event in May and beyond, have a good ride. Cheers.